Business on Kaya Biz. 10 minutes to 7 o'clock. You're listening to Kai Biz here on Kai 959. And of course, as you know, every Wednesday we talk all things to do with entrepreneurship. Tonight we're taking a different stance though. You might know that the 8th of March, this Friday, is International Women's Day. And uh, given that the globe is actively participating in ensuring that women empowerment, women inclusion in our economy, and of course, just fighting a cause for gender parity remains a significant priority uh, for many economies across the globe. And the theme for International Women's Day this Friday is Inspire Inclusion. And what better way to do that than to ensure that the women who are participants in our population can also be economically active. And if you take a look at data from pretty much anywhere, you'd be well aware that there's a significant contribution that women actually make through the form of entrepreneurship. So tonight we're going to speak to a female entrepreneur who does exactly that. Working in a space that I love and admire because we tend to visit this place every other week. Uh, Making sure that your hair, your nails, beauty and cosmetics are effectively well taken care of and as we've typically noted despite the downturns in the economy there's always some additional consumer spend that is directed to these spaces so we will be speaking to the founder of uh, Bella Trends who'll be giving us some insight uh, into not only the running of her business but a wonderful understanding of just how it is that institutions like First for Women have offered her a multitude of business support to ensure that she has kept her operations going and found innovative ways of even broadening her revenue streams. So, Katia Ribeiro joins us now as the owner of Bella Trends to tell us more. Such a pleasure to have you and welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you, Google, for having me here. I must tell you, we're always excited to speak to female entrepreneurs because there's always a fantastic story, right, as to how one started. Uh, And I can imagine, like many entrepreneurs, when we think about your business, um, you work in the beauty space. Did you just wake up one day and decide, well, this is a sector I like. Let me open up a business here. (laughs) Okay, so basically I started um, with a passion for women empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I myself, when I used to go to salons, and do my hair, I've always found that women open up and they tell their stories. Oh, it's a therapy session. So it's like a therapy (laughs) session and you just want to, you know, advise women and just listen to the stories and inspire women as well. So for me, that's where it all stemmed from. It was opening up a place where a a home away from home where women could feel comfortable, Mm. where women could come, do your hair, do your nails, be beautiful on the outside and as well as rejuvenate rejuvenate the inside. Mm. And that's very true but we also know that the beauty industry is a very competitive one right Katya very I can imagine when the pandemic happened oh boy (laughs) and that's when I actually started the business and Mm. and that's where my story stems from so I started the business during the COVID I had lost my job and I was really distraught and I thought okay what should I open you know and I opened a salon and with that it was really daunting because you know that uh salons were the last businesses that they opened i was about to say that's really brave because a lot of Mm. women were still stuck at home at the time we had restrictions in Mm. terms of movement so even conceptualizing a business that way and seeing the long-term picture uh, is quite innovative uh, and 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 robust of you in terms of confidence in 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 your brand it actually taught me resilience Mm. and i also had the mindset where i'm going to employ women that that also have lost their jobs during the COVID. So it was it was about uplifting women, building women, as well as uplifting myself because I didn't have a revenue stream at that stage. Mm. So for me, opening Bella Trends was great, but very daunting. Mm. And maybe let's talk about that experience, right? Because mm. as you're saying, you're opening a business, you're doing so under pressure, but you still have your passion aligned to this. Uh, and that sometimes can make it very difficult for us to actually follow through with quote unquote business procedures. So getting the right funding. Uh, and once we get funding, we tend to buy the important assets. But mm. we also need to remember, you need to protect these assets, Katya, because if it catches a light, if it gets very stolen, uh, if it's lost in a, or damaged in a flood, mm. you won't have any other revenue stream. But you actually stuck to that procedure of making sure that you follow through with the necessary basics, right? And that's what I did. I I put the salon together and I thought to myself, okay, if there's a fire, what happens next? Mm. You know, if someone slips and falls, you you never really think about that in a salon. Then what happens to you as a business owner, Mm. you know? So that's when I found First for Women Insurance to actually insure my assets, you know, and also in case somebody falls, public liability. Yes. And then 
to my surprise, there was a division called Businessist. Mm-hmm. And I was obviously having to now do a website where, I would, uh, you know, digital um, presence is very important, mm. you know, for your business, for people to take your business seriously and also for marketing purposes. So... Bef- Go ahead, and but I'm so intrigued because before you actually talk about you know the website and mm-hmm. all of these which are part of uh, building a successful business, not many of us read our insurance contracts. So, firstly, well done to you <laughs> for following through <laughs> on that, especially when it comes to insurance, because there's a lot of detail and sometimes we might get lost in the technicalities. But tell us mm-hmm. what uh, a business assist actually is, and when you read through your contract, what what insights and findings and support you you realized you could access. Oh, my word. I was actually very happy as a woman to find an insurance uh, policy where they cater to women entrepreneurs, to women, actually. Mm -hmm. And they have different divisions where they have like your angel assists, which I came with today. Yes. Safe and secure, lovely vehicles. And also the fact that, you know, as a business owner and you're just starting your business, I've never heard an insurance that actually has a business support division. Mm. So for me, finding that out and finding out that, okay, I can get a basic website, a free basic website. Which is part of the business support. Which is part of the business support was amazing. And it wasn't just limited to that, right? But but, No. Talk to us about some of the other levels of support that you were able to access. Okay, so basically you get the tenders. There's that as well. And then, like I said, the angel assists. And on my part, the free website, mm. you can um, also get vehicle magnets. So they, they're very um, interactive with you and they ask you, what are your business needs? Uh, if you're in the public sector, y- then yes. you can apply for, yes. or, or, you know, servicing government, applying yes. for tenders so, and RFQs in that end. And if you have a vehicle and you want to get your brand out there, you can do the vehicle magnets, which is amazing for me, you know. But on my side, what I needed was... Um, a website. Talk to us about that because I can imagine you calling your insurance provider to say, well, I need a website, which is a story or conversation that typically many of us don't think would typically happen with your insurance provider, right? But what was that experience like in terms of the process, accessibility, and of course, making sure that your website was set up? It was very fast and efficient. I actually called the insurer and I I asked them, would you guys cover a website? Because I just need a website for my business. I just opened my business. And straight after that, they referred me to the uh, supplier, which then got into contact with me immediately. And we discussed what it was that I was looking for, which which was a basic website, just to get my brand out there. And the service was phenomenal. Mm. It was fast, it was efficient. I had my website up in less than a week. Katia? Oh, goodness. And this is all at no additional cost? At no additional cost. No additional cost whatsoever. Mm. And talk to us then, because now you've got a website, you've got a store, you've mm. protected your assets with the necessary insurance. You know what other support you need from um, 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 the, 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 the various aspects of uh, what it is that First for Women could provide for you in terms of additional business support. But I'm keen to understand following having the website, mm-hmm. what did this do for your business? Sure. You know, by having a digital, um, you know, By having a digital footprint, it really opened up a lot of doors for me. I I managed to get more clients. I managed to get a lot of inquiries and a lot of uh, walk-ins fit in the door, which is what us as entrepreneurs need. Mm. And that's important, Katja, right? Because not only does it speak to marketing, uh, but I can imagine this is coming out of the pandemic. You're Mm -hmm. trying to get more feet in. Uh, Hair salons and the beauty sector Mm -hmm. were one of the last industries to open up. So I can also imagine that you also had to diversify your revenue streams in terms of e-commerce and looking at other things to do, you know, even selling products online, which I understand is part of your story. Yes. So what I did is I actually franchised my uh, salon to a business, a woman business owner Mm -hmm. who's now running it. And I managed to open another division, which is Bella Trends Marketing, to assist small businesses in the same situation that I was facing with corporate identity. Mm. I'm learning something from your story here uh, and uh, tying this back to the overall women's International Women's Day theme mm-hmm. being Inspire Inclusion. You yourself as a woman looked to be included in the economy and in the business space. Uh, you passed this on by including other women and entrepreneurs within mm-hmm. the space that you offer um, um, in terms of the franchising of your business and expanded that even further to more women who consume and make use not only of your products but also come into your hair salon um, or and and, and uh, 
store to actually purchase your product and share in that experience. And this is teaching us something, I think, um, mm. Katya, that we all need to be cognizant of when it comes to women in entrepreneurship. And maybe share your thoughts on the importance of, number one, the inclusion of women mm. in the business community, but also how companies, more companies like First Woman has done, need to provide that additional support and not just stick to their knitting, that if it's insurance, that's it, it ends mm. there. But how themes like businesses uh, can continue to assist more women to thrive in entrepreneurship. I feel that women are the nurturers of the nation. And if we can uplift and build women and assist them with the resources that they need to take their lives a step further, whether it's in their personal lives, in their careers and in their businesses, I would say to companies, let's work together. Let's straighten each other's crown and let's foster a community of upliftment as a woman entrepreneur, I really feel that together we are one. And if we can be un- united, imagine how this nation can grow. Mm. And for the woman who might be stuck at home right now thinking, but Katya, you're smart. You had access to First for Women. You had the necessary capitals to start a business. And perhaps you're bolder than what I am. Because let's be honest, imposter mm. syndrome is typically what holds a lot of women back from reaching their potential. Very true. What's your message to them? I would say, first of all, Don't worry about your circumstance. Don't worry about where you grew up. Don't worry about where you are now. Just know that you can harness your talents because each and every one of us have talents. Mm. Get up and go get your dreams and go get what it is that has, that is ordained for you. I had to do that. If I had two options, either I lay down and die or I go and fight for my dreams and I fought for my dreams and this is where I am. So you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Katya, such an inspirational story and really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us, not only about your story and your journey, but the opportunities that we also need to pull into as female entrepreneurs and uh, looking at the support that uh, even insurance providers like First for Women can offer. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Muito obrigada. <laughs> Muito obrigada and thank you so much for having me here anytime. Really appreciate it. That's our entrepreneur that we're speaking to tonight, the owner of Bella Trends. If you're not familiar with them, really important business that is uh, not only supporting many more female entrepreneurs themselves, but also prioritizing a lot of growth and opportunities within themes like staff wellness, events management, as well as marketing. Uh, and of course, uh, having its roots founded within the beauty industry in South Africa. That's Katia, Katia Ribeiro, uh, owner of Bella Trends, joining us this evening. Kaya Talk. Kaya Talk. People are really...